Thank you for joining us today. I'm Ryan Drysdale, the Associate Director of the All-In Campus Democracy Challenge. Before we begin, a few technical items. Closed captioning is being provided by a live transcriber. You can access this via the live transcription button at the bottom of your Zoom taskbar. This event will be recorded and the recording will be posted on All-In's YouTube channel. We encourage you to engage with fellow attendees in the chat. We invite you to share your name, pronouns, and institution or organization by typing these in the chat at any time. We also encourage you to update how your name appears in the Zoom platform by right-clicking on your name, select more, and then choose rename. This will allow you to readjust how your name appears and give you an opportunity to add your pronouns, institution, or organization. We also encourage you to drop notes of congratulations or emojis in the chat throughout the ceremony today to celebrate the achievements of the awardees. You can also engage with our team and fellow attendees on social media. Follow at All In to Vote on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and use the event hashtag All In Awards. The All In Awards ceremony events are being held alongside the 2021 Students Learn Students Vote Coalition's post-election gathering. You can find more information and a full agenda in our program book, which is being dropped in the chat and uplifted on social channels now. Before I hand it over to All In's Executive Director, Jen Domingo Goldman, to kick us off, let's take a look back at the highlights from All In Awards ceremony in 2019, when we last gathered together, in that case in person in Washington, DC, at a time when this celebration, student voting work, and the world in general looked a little different. So across the country, hundreds of administrators and students are working to increase voter participation. The All In Challenge turns these individual moments into a broader movement. The All In Campus Democracy Challenge is a recognition program to recognize colleges and universities that are working to promote political learning and college student voting. It's really exciting to be here in DC. It feels like all of the hard work is finally paying off and getting recognized. Good afternoon and welcome to the second biannual All In Campus Democracy Challenge Awards Ceremony. Helping students learn how they can achieve the goals and outcomes that they want is really important. All of our students need to understand how to use their education and their gifts and their skills to make a positive difference in the world and in our democratic republic. My goal in life is to make sure that our college students learn how to use their voices and voting is one of the first ways that we learn how to do that. It's time for us as administrators and universities to step up to the challenge and help schools institutionalize this important work and it's time for us to transform democracy in this country together. Seeing such high turnout rates for college students in 2018, I think the future is going to see a huge student voting block in the 2020 elections and beyond, and more and more students are going to be a powerful voice that politicians and leaders are going to have to listen to. You are going to have to demand as a generation that your issues are listened to, and the only way to do that is to vote. I'm all in because I know that one voice can make a difference, and when all of our voices are working together, we're going to create a fundamental transformation of what this country could look like. Wow, that video is such a great reminder of the memorable day back in 2019 when we could all hug each other and celebrate in person. This award ceremony is going to look different, but we hope it's just as exciting as student voting work is still just as important today. And weren't Clarissa's words about the student voting block in 2020 prescient? Good afternoon and welcome to the third biannual All In Challenge Awards Ceremony. My name is Jen Domigo Goldman and I'm proud to be the Executive Director of the All In Campus Democracy Challenge at Civic Nation. The day has finally come and we get to celebrate the incredible efforts of more than 840 colleges and universities leading up to the 2020 election. The All In Challenge is proud to be a national nonpartisan program of the nonprofit Civic Nation. Civic Nation is a home for change makers who inspire, educate, and activate people around issues that will define this generation. Programs at Civic Nation are focused on strengthening democracy, fostering civic engagement, advancing social justice and voter participation, addressing public health crises, and fighting for gender equity and more. To that end, it's my pleasure to welcome to the virtual stage Civic Nation's Chief Executive Officer, Kyle Learman. Unfortunately, Valerie Jarrett couldn't make it at the last minute, but we're lucky to have Kyle join us today. 
Thanks so much, Jen. It's great to see everybody. Um, I have worked for Valerie in one way or another for about 13 years, so always happy to, to step in. Um, she was really sorry uh, she wasn't able to make it um, and sends her regards, um, but no, she's um, really just proud and inspired uh, by all the work uh, that, these, that you all have done across the country over the last many years and that you're going to be doing for many years to come. I'm so excited uh, to welcome you uh, on behalf of Civic Nation. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things you all could be doing with your time on your campuses across the country. And I would argue that what you're doing in increasing civic participation, voting, democratic engagement is the single most impactful thing you could do with your time in terms of transforming our democracy and strengthening our country. Uh, with attacks on voting rights across the country, nonpartisan democratic engagement, and therefore the work that we do here uh, with all of you is more important now than it has ever been before. Uh, when campuses join this challenge, they make a commitment to increase student voting rates, to help students form the habits of active and informed citizenship, and to make nonpartisan democratic participation a core value on their campuses, really institutionalizing it and changing it from year to year to year, increasing that democratic engagement from year to year to year. We know that this work isn't always easy as I, I you know, I've been involved in this type of work for uh, my entire work life. Um, it's hard. There are up, there are big, great wins. There are big up points. There are, uh, there are moments where you're like, it's hard. I don't know if this is working, um, but the trends are there. Your work is paying off uh, over the year after year engagement is paying off in an enormous way. Some of you have been doing this work for years. Others of you are just starting, and we're so excited always to welcome new folks into the fold. But you all have one thing in common. You and your campuses are committed to educating students to be civic-minded and politically engaged. All In strives for a more inclusive democracy, one that closes voter participation gaps that currently persist by age and race across the country. At Civic Nation, we envision a country where the electorate mirrors our country's makeup and college students are civically and democratically engaged on an ongoing basis during and between elections and not just at the polls. Uh, we like to say at Civic Nation that there's no such thing as an off year. The individuals and campuses being honored today are leading the way, helping us reach these goals and realize this vision. Together, we are cultivating generations of engaged and informed citizens, citizens essential to a healthy and thriving democracy. Thank you for joining us here to celebrate this incredible work. Congratulations to all of our winners. So excited to hear from each and every one of you. And I'll turn it back over to Jen uh, to join us on the virtual stage here. Thank you so much, Kyle, for your welcome and for your tireless efforts on behalf of Civic Nation, voters and voting rights in our democracy. Appropriately, today is the 56th anniversary of the signing of the Higher Education Act, or HEA, which requires institutions of higher education to make a good faith effort to register students to vote. Much like other landmark legislation of the era, such as the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, the HEA was intended to help level a playing field that for too long has been stacked against people of color and those from low-income backgrounds. Closing voter participation gaps, as Kyle indicated, across race and age is one of All In's core commitments, and the requirements of the Higher Education Act are just one tool with which we can do so. Remarkably, today is also National First Generation College Celebration Day, a day to recognize and honor the successes of first generation college students, faculty, staff, and alumni. While there is no direct measurement of democratic engagement for first gen folks, we do know that they play an incredible role in higher education that we collectively must continue to better support and celebrate our first generation students and peers. We also wanna take a moment to acknowledge that the All In team is committed to supporting college student voter access. And one of our main objectives is to close these voting gaps based on demographics. To this end, we wanted to acknowledge the work of the Snyder Act of 1924, which admitted Native Americans born to the US to full US citizenship and which aligns with the 15th amendment passed in 1870, granting US citizens the right to vote regardless of race. It wasn't until the Snyder Act that Native Americans could enjoy the rights granted by this amendment. And we recognize this wasn't actualized until the 19th amendment later, allowing women to vote um, in 1920. 
Our aim is that all eligible persons will be informed and active voters. The All-on-Campus Democracy Challenge currently supports a variety of institution types, including but not limited to Asian American and Native Pacific Islander serving institutions, Native American serving non-tribal institutions, Alaska Native serving and Native Hawaiian serving institutions, and tribal colleges and universities, which specifically serve the Native American population. To that end, I'd also acknowledge that members of our team currently live and work on Native lands of the Piscataway, Anacostan, Pocanoket, Wamp, Panag, Powhatan, and the Eastern Band of the Cherokee, as well as the Yuchi and Kickapoo peoples. As we continue to work toward an inclusive and thriving democracy, our hope is that you too will reflect on the spaces in which you reside and that you'll support all persons in casting their vote in all elections. You can let us know what native lands you reside on or your campus is on by visiting native-land.ca, this website, which we have posted in the chat, and then sharing the information in the chat with us. Acknowledging the native lands on which we reside is only a symbolic gesture without also advocating for equity and justice for all peoples, including members of our indigenous peoples. Please join me in committing to take action in your own sphere of influence to do so. And now we'll turn to our primary reason for being here, to acknowledge and applaud the efforts of students, faculty, staff, and administrators, as well as members of the local, state, and national organizations in getting college students to register and turn out to vote in the 2020 election. The 2020 election was like no other. It came 237 days into a global pandemic and in the wake of the largest protests for racial justice and civil rights in a generation. Each of you played an essential role in this work. You funded, fed, mobilized, educated, organized, masked, hand sanitized, texted, called, walked, worried, and motivated college students to register, to educate themselves and their peers about candidates and issues, and help to ensure they cast their ballots at nearby mailboxes, drop boxes, and polling place in unprecedented numbers. And you did all this through a nonpartisan lens and with the intention of ensuring that every eligible college student had the information and means needed to register and cast an informed ballot. A recent Forbes article co-authored by several of the partner organizations who are here to celebrate with us today and written in honor of National Voter Education Week last month talks about living and voting in unprecedented times. The 2020 election was unprecedented. College student turnout was unprecedented. And this ceremony's virtual three-day format is also unprecedented. But together, we've created a precedent that we're each all in to vote and all in for democracy in every election, from the statewide and local elections held just last week to the upcoming 2022 midterm elections and everything in between. We've known for quite a while that 2020 had a comparably higher voter turnout including 50% of young people ages 18 to 29, a remarkable 11 point increase from the 2016 presidential election based on data from our friends and colleagues at Circle. We also knew that college students in 2016 voted at an average rate of 52%, itself an increase over 2012. But with the long awaited, much anticipated release of the national study on learning, voting and engagement at the end of October, our beloved and salt reports from our dear friends at the Institute for Democracy and Higher Education at the Jonathan M. Tisch College of Civic Life at Tufts University, we now know that college student voter turnout in 2020 reached 66%, a remarkable 14 point increase from the student voting rate in 2016 and bringing students nearly on par with the voting rate of the general population. This is fantastic news and a testament to the work of students, faculty, and staff in the broader student democratic engagement community that you are all a part of. As a result of this tremendous work today, we'll recognize remarkable individuals, colleges, and universities with champion or best in class awards. To preview the ceremony agenda, we've first been welcomed by Civic Nation's Executive Director, Kyle Learman. Next, our team will announce the 2020 campus seal designees and then our individual champion awardees. We'll then hear from our keynote speaker, U.S. Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. We'll wrap up the ceremony by announcing All In's 2020 Best in Class and Champion Awards. We also hope you'll join us for our state campus voting challenge ceremony tomorrow and our athletic conference voting challenge ceremony on Wednesday. Our work in this event today wouldn't be possible without other members of the Fantastic All On team, who you'll hear from in a bit, as well as our generous supporters and all and award ceremony sponsors, which you can find in our program book. 
This year, Allen is celebrating its fifth anniversary. We've increased participation by more than 400% since starting with 186 inaugural campuses prior to the 2016 election. We had grown to a cohort of 560 campuses by our second award ceremony in 2019, and today more than 840 colleges and universities are participating across all 50 states in the District of Columbia. The All-In Challenge and the broader nonpartisan democratic engagement movement across higher education are still growing in breadth and depth, and together we are graduating students into voters. I'll now welcome Dominique McMillan, my colleague at All In and our program coordinator to announce the 2020 All In Seals of Recognition. Thank you, Jen. One of the things we're most proud of is that more than 840 colleges and universities are participating from 50 states in the District of Columbia, enrolling more than 9.1 million students. All of our participating campuses are eligible for seals of recognition if they are enrolled in the National Study of Learning, Voting, and Engagement, as mentioned earlier by my colleague, Jen. Seals are earned based on a range of voter turnout percentiles. For the 2016 election, 244 campuses earned seals of recognition from all in. And for the 2018 election, 466 campuses earned seals. This year, we're excited to present an incredible 495 seals based on student voting data from more than 500 2020 campus NSOF reports that were submitted by campuses to the All In Challenge team. We're proud to announce the 2020 seal designees. You can find a full list of these campuses dropped into the chat. This year, 72 campuses are being awarded bronze seals for achieving a student voting rate between 50 and 59%. Silver seals are being awarded to 181 campuses for achieving a student voting rate between 60 and 69 percent. 195 campuses earned gold seals for achieving a student voting rate of 70 to 79 percent. For perspective, only nine campuses received gold award seals from all in during our ceremony for the 2016 election. That's an incredible increase. Finally, Platinum seals were earned by 47 campuses for achieving a student voting rate of 80 plus percent. If you're joining us today from a campus that earned one of these seals, give a shout out in the chat and on social media. Congratulations to all 493 2020 election campus seal recipients. And now I'll turn the mic over to All In's Director of Strategic Initiatives, Stephanie King, who'll present the first of our champion awards. Thank you, Dominique. The awards we're presenting today fall into two categories and are based on three different sets of criteria. In a bit, we'll recognize campuses with the champion and best in class awards based on either the strength of the campus's nonpartisan democratic engagement action plan or their campus's NSOB reports. But first, we have the honor of recognizing individual awardees with champion awards based on a nomination process and the determination of an awards review committee. We thank our 65 reviewers for their efforts, as well as all those who took the time to nominate deserving colleagues, students, and organizations. These individual champion awards are given in recognition of exemplary leadership in helping students form the habits of active and informed citizenship and advancing the work of the All In Campus Democracy Challenge. Our first champion awards recognize outstanding partner organizations. We'll be honoring two standout partners, one, a national organization, and the other, a local state-based organization. But before we do so, we want to recognize the diverse network of organizations and individuals that make up the democratic engagement movement and higher education more broadly. The people who work closely in our team and with campuses to support their student voting efforts if you represent one of more than 400 amazing Students Learn, Students Vote Coalition members, please make yourself known in the chat, share on social media, and give yourself and others a shout out online. Thank you for all of your partnership and tireless work to deepen the culture around student voting. It wouldn't happen without you. And now, our first two champion awards of the day, the Standout National Partner Award and Standout Campus Partner Award. Our first awardee for our Standout National Partner Award is the National Association of Basketball Coaches, or NABC. 
the National Association of Basketball Coaches was a driving force behind the All-In and NABC Coaches Voter Education Task Force and Coaches Voter Registration and Engagement Pledge in 2020. In turn, they engaged more than 1,200 coaches to support college student athletes in the electoral process, making a commitment to have 100% of their team register to vote and to do so in 2020. We are beyond grateful for their commitment to incorporating nonpartisan democratic engagement into the collegiate experience of all student athletes. Thank you to Craig Robinson, the executive director of the NABC, Eric Weiberger, the director of digital and social media of the NABC, and the entire NABC team for their incredible work and partnership. And a special thanks to those known as the Magnificent Seven, who have spearheaded the work of the All In and NABC Coaches Voter Education Task Force. Thank you to Coach Mike Burns of Boise State, Coach Patrick McCary of then Washington Adventist University, Coach Ryan Marks of St. Francis, Coach Marlon Stewart of Oregon State, Coach Otter Taylor of Tuskegee University, and of course, to Coach Joseph Kennedy of Holy Cross and Coach Eric Revenue of Georgia Tech for supporting the network of task force coaches throughout the 2020 election cycle and beyond. Next, our award for standout campus partner goes to North Carolina Campus Compact. Leslie Garvin serves as the executive director of the North Carolina Campus Compact. In the nominator's words, Leslie has shown leadership and partnership to campuses across the state of North Carolina. In her tenure, she has made North Carolina an example in the voting space for the longest running College Student Voter Summit, now seven years running. When working with national organizations, North Carolina Campus Compact is intentional about sharing tools and resources that support partners in the campuses that work with them. The North Carolina Campus Compact Voting Coalition is a growing statewide network of partner organizations working together for collaboration and greater impact. Their growth and collaboration is largely in part to Leslie's leadership. We should note that North Carolina Campus Compact is in the process of planning their eighth annual State Voter Summit for fall 2022, and that Leslie and her colleagues at You Can Vote, another fabulous partner in the North Carolina space, has recently launched a North Carolina Campus Voting Challenge with the All On Campus team. Congratulations to Leslie and congratulations to Craig and the NABC for their tireless efforts. We'll now move to the awards that recognize individuals from our participating campuses. I'll welcome to the stage my partner, Kat Fish, All In's Managing Director, to do these honors. Welcome, Kat. Thank you, Stephanie, and good afternoon, everyone. I am thrilled to be presenting at yet another All In Award ceremony, celebrating your important work. As you may already know, our team works closely with campus administrators at participating campuses. So often, administrators are the ones leading the charge on their campuses when it comes to nonpartisan student democratic engagement. We see them leading democratic engagement committees, helping to get registration embedded in orientation or in course registration, and working with student groups to plan voting related events on campus. Our next category of awards recognizes them. We had dozens of nominees for the Standout Administrator Award this year. 44 incredible committed administrators. Each of them made outstanding contributions on their campuses. So it was truly inspiring to read the nominations submitted by their colleagues and their peers and their students. But without further ado, it's my pleasure to announce the Standout Administrator Champion Award, number one, goes to Monica Clark, Director of Service Learning at Alabama A&M University. Monica is a true hero of student voting. She ensures that student voting efforts engage the entire community, even beyond the edges of campus. For instance, she helped to coordinate the 2020 National HBCU Summit and has partnered with local high schools in the area to coach and develop their action plans. Monica has made it a priority to ensure that voting is accessible to students at Alabama A&M, including special plans to engage commuter students and provide accommodations for students with accessibility needs. 
In the words of her nominator, one thing that immediately stands out when speaking with Monica is her confidence in the importance of this work, particularly because Alabama A&M is an HBCU, historically Black university in the South. She knows how important it is for these students to, not vote, to vote, not just for themselves, but as many first-time generational voters for their families as well, end quote. We're so thankful for your work, Monica. Congratulations. Our second standout Administrative Champion Award goes to Elizabeth Parmley, the Associate Vice President of Undergraduate Studies at Metropolitan State University of Denver. Elizabeth was instrumental in organizing and hosting the first Colorado Campus Voting Summit at Metropolitan State University of Denver, a Hispanic serving institution, a summit I got to go to. In the words of her nominator, Elizabeth's work stands out for the innovative thinking and the firm commitment to diversity it reflects. For all MSU Denver students, that demonstrates the campus is a place for everyone. Elizabeth instituted policies that prepare all students on our campus for the election to turn out the vote and to engage with confidence, end quote. Elizabeth exemplifies what it means to ensure that all students have the information and access they need to be informed and engaged voters. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Congratulations to both of our standout administrators, Monica and Elizabeth, for their very important work. I'm now going to pass the spotlight over to Powell Maynard Mall, Executive Director of the Scholar Strategies Network, to announce the faculty awards. Powell and the Scholar Strategies Network team are important partners of ours in the Students Learn Students Vote Coalition that you've heard about already. They support faculty in the work of nonpartisan civic learning, political engagement, and voter participation. We're thankful to call Powell a colleague and friend. Over to you, Pal. Thank you so much, Kat. Faculty members play such an influential role in the student learning and experience space. The Standout Faculty Award recognizes two individuals who have gone beyond their role in the classroom to help change campus culture and democratic engagement. The first Standout Faculty Award goes to Terry Platt director of the Isabella T. Jenkins Honors Program and associate professor in the Department of Public Administration at Clark Atlanta University. In the words of her nominator, Dr. Platt has delivered a massive scope of work, innovation, and dedication to the whole community of Clark Atlanta University and the student voting space at large. Although 2020 was the first year that she led student voter engagement efforts at CAU, her strategic visioning and tireless dedication to ensure every student and their families were able to vote was impressive. In addition to supporting the CAU community, Dr. Platt shared her expertise with the National Student Voting Space as an Ask Every Student co-designer campus, SLSV executive committee member, and convener of HPCUs across Georgia. Further, Dr. Platt consistently centers student voices and leadership trusting them to communicate best to the communities they represent through tailored messaging and one-on-one -on -one outreach to their own communities, representing different cultural, faith, and interest groups." End quote. Terry partners with disability services to make sure students with disabilities and are supported in the voting process. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is always at the heart of Dr. Platt's work, ensuring that Black student voters at Clark, Clark Atlanta University and historically Black colleges and universities across Georgia have every opportunity and access to making their voices heard through the democratic process. She is currently uplifting the work of HBCUs across the country through an edited volume of essays. Thank you for exemplifying the intersection of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and justice in our democracy, Terry. Congratulations. Our second student faculty member award goes to Bridget Trogdon, Associate Professor in the Department of Engineering and Science Education, as well as an Associate Dean for Engagement and General Education in the Division of Undergraduate Studies at Clemson University. In the words of Bridget's nominator, 
We hope that the that every faculty member supports ensuring that every student on campus participates in our democracy. Bridget does all that and also finds the connections between all of the different higher ed spaces and advocates to have a, to have a student voting component to their work. Bridget leads Clemson's Student Voting Coalition, where she builds the strategy for the voter engagement work that happens on their campus. In 2020, they created manuals for student organizations on how to integrate democracy engagement into their activities with a cultural programming and diversity emphasis, end quote. Bridget has also helped start Democracy Challenge, a campus voting challenge that campuses in the Atlantic Coast Athletic Conference. Bridget's efforts are moving the needle on her campus, in her region, and for the faculty voting space as a whole. Congratulations, Bridget. Please join us in congratulating both of these incredible faculty members. You are examples of the role faculty can and must play in educating students and fostering campus cultures that support civic learning and engagement. It is now my pleasure to introduce Marissa Pittman, Dillard University student and former All-In intern during the 2020 election to present the student honor roll. Welcome, Marissa. Thank you, Pam. What would student voting be without the students? It is my pleasure to recognize the students who are being honored on this year's All-In Student Honor Roll. But before I do, I would like to share with you the nominees for our Standout Student Champion Awards. Each of these students and so many others past and present on your campuses deserve to be recognized for their important contributions to the 2020 election and to fostering civic cultures on our campuses. This year, we celebrate 15 student honor roll recipients who have engaged their peers, their campuses, and even their policymakers and other stakeholders in making it easier for students to access voter registration education and turnout. These students are our today and our future. Please join me in recognizing Kevin Ballin of Harvard University, Megan Bell of Arkansas Tech University, Anna Blanco from Princeton University, Colby College's Cutie Brown, North Carolina a and State University's Brandon Day, Jenny De La Cruz from Maryland Institute College of Art, Luis Carlos Estrada from Calchez College, Alex Flowers of Pittman Valley Community College, Tamia Folkis from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Ann Green of Stony Brook University, the University of Georgia's Brianna Hayes, Grand Valley State's Samuel Jacobs, Christina Reagan of Eckert College, Mason Reese of Rice University, and Jocelyn Roof, a Hawkeye from the University of Iowa. This cohort of current students and recent graduates helped turn out their peers in big ways during the 2020 election. They organized their campuses, helped develop campus democratic engagement action plans, advocated for polling places, recruited, and even served as poll workers, and registered students to vote in record numbers. All of this during a global pandemic. Congratulations again to this cohort of engaged and informed college students who set the example for their peers and all of us. I will now pass the mic to current all-in intern and Truman State University student, Macy Cecil, to present the two standout student awards. Welcome, Macy. Thank you, Marissa. I'm honored to present our standout graduate student champion award to Divyanch Kaushik of Carnegie Mellon University. Last year, Divyanch, who currently serves on the SLSB Coalition Advisory Board, ran one of the biggest voter engagement programs ever executed at Carnegie Mellon. He helped register nearly 800 new voters and recruited 50 peers, all while advocating for policies that support student voting. In the words of his nominator, from centering the voices of underrepresented students to advancing the cause for equal rights and social justice and fighting injustices, diversity, equity, and inclusion have been the core to all of his efforts. Thank you for your important work, Divyanj, and congratulations. Our standout undergraduate student award recognizes the University of Maryland College Park's Alexander Marquez. According to our nominator, in the 2020 presidential election, Alexandra served as the sole student coordinator for civic engagement and voting on a campus of more than 40,000 students. 
She created and implemented essential student voter engagement activities and messages for UMD students. Furthermore, Alexander fostered excitement about voting at UMD with competitions among student organizations in order to ensure first time voters were informed and ready to vote by mail or in person. Alexander forged partnerships with organizations and departments across campus to extend the messaging to reach as many students as possible, including Mary Purge, Student Government, Residence Hall Association, Athletics, Strategic Communication, and many academic units, a framework that will be used for student voter engagement in future elections. Congratulations, Alexandra. Please join us in recognizing Alexandra and Avianch and the credible student champions on our honor roll in the chat and on social media. Our next two awards will be presented by the inaugural chair of the All-In Challenges President's Council, President Emerita of Princeton University, Shirley Tillman. Good afternoon, everyone. Before we hear from our keynote speaker, I have the privilege of presenting the Standout President or Chancellor Award category. Since March of 2020, I've served as the inaugural chair of the All-In President's Council for Student Voter Participation. Alongside 15 president council members who are current or retired higher education presidents, I worked with the All In Challenge team to support the academic leaders to encourage nonpartisan democratic engagement efforts in 2020. Together, we created a network of more than 330 presidents and chancellors who publicly acknowledged the importance of advancing student voting by becoming a signatory of the president's commitment to full student voter participation. And a list of these signatories is available in the program book for your review. I'm proud to recognize these nominees and all of the current college and university presidents leading efforts to institutionalize nonpartisan civic learning, political engagement, and voter participation on their campuses and beyond. The role of college and university presidents is critical to setting the mission, the values, and the priorities of a campus, which is why these awards are so important. The first standout president award goes to President Donald Guy Generals, president of the Community College of Philadelphia. President Generals has incorporated community service into every facet of the Community College of Philadelphia, even creating the Institute for Community Engagement and Civic Leadership to host service learning, volunteerism, community outreach, and democratic engagement efforts. His nominator says, yeah, I quote, Dr. Generals has encouraged specialized voter engagement programming that breaks down the barriers between the right of democratic expression and those at the college. Dr. Generals is committed to improving the lives of Philadelphians. He has prioritized voter literacy, thus facilitating an increase in student voting each year. Under his leadership, the Community College of Philadelphia was designated a voter-friendly campus in 2021 for its student voter participation in the 2020 election. Congratulations, President Generals. The second standout president award goes to President Fainese Miller of Hamlin University. President Miller has emphasized the importance of participation in the democratic process often invoking her own story of growing up with parents who fought for civil rights and a father who led an NAACP chapter. During her inauguration ceremony, Miller recalled that she learned from her parents the following, no matter what life threw my way, what obstacles were placed in my way, I was a part of a democracy, a civil society, and to never take for granted what that means. Congratulations, President Miller. We thank President Generals and President Miller for their commitment to nonpartisan student voter registration, education, and turnout at their institutions beyond. Please join me in congratulating them once again in the chat. And now I'll turn it back over to Jen to introduce our keynote speaker. 
Thank you, Shirley, and congratulations again to each of today's individual awardees. Now is an intermission and the awards presentations will play a short video highlighting the voices of some of our 2020 award winners before keynote remarks from the Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. We in higher education have an obligation and a responsibility to prepare our students for all that it means to be part of a democratic society. Our students are a leading voice on Capitol Hill and in City Hall. And in doing so, they are standing up to be the most fervent proponents of democracy and increasing access to our democratic institutions. When faculty are able to work with students through the three pillars of voter registration, voter education, and voter turnout, we all win and we're all in. We are all in for voting. Am I all in? Absolutely. I'm all in to vote because I know that my vote matters now and it matters for the next generation to follow. I'm very honored to receive the All In Standout Local Election Official Award. I really appreciate being an All In Award winner. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully you found those little um, snippets of video in as inspiring as I have. Now I'm, I'm going to introduce our keynote speaker today. Secretary Cardona was sworn in as the 12th Secretary of Education on March 2nd of this year. He previously served as the Commissioner of Education in Connecticut. In this position, he faced the unprecedented challenge of responding to the COVID-19 pandemic and led the safe school reopening efforts in Connecticut. His focus on equity and excellence for all learners has driven his work at all levels. Secretary Cardona has two decades of experience as a public school educator from the city of Meriden, Connecticut, his hometown. He began his career as an elementary teacher. He then served as a school principal for 10 years. In 2012, Secretary Cardona won the National Distinguished Principal Award for the state of Connecticut and the Outstanding Administrator Award. As the daughter of a public school teacher and the mother of a child currently attending public elementary school, thank you, Secretary Cardona, for your commitment to ensuring educational equity and attainment for all young people in our democracy. And especially thank you, Secretary Cardona, for offering words of welcome and congratulations to our attendees today. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to share a few words. I wanna start by thanking Dr. Jennifer Damagol goldman for your work leading the All In Challenge. I also wanna thank Valerie Jarrett for your leadership of the Civic Nation Board. And I wanna congratulate all the winners of the Campus Democracy Challenge. It's an honor to speak with so many higher education advocates, administrators, faculty members, coaches, presidents, partners, and of course, our students. Thank you for your efforts to support a nonpartisan student voting effort on college campuses. We all know voting is key for our democracy and the Biden administration prioritizes voting rights and access. The 2020 election showed youth voter turnout in large numbers. You should be proud of what you've done to support college students' voting efforts. The All In Challenge does great work to build up voting habits because we want voting to be a habit, not a hobby. That starts with engagement at a young age, and it continues one election at a time. I'm excited to see that more than 800 institutions across all 50 states and Washington, D.C. have committed to this challenge. They're making student voter participation and nonpartisan civic learning and engagement a priority on their campuses. The Higher Education Act says that institutions of higher education are required to make a good faith effort to register students to vote. Campuses participating in the All In Challenge are committed to this effort and much more. And we at the Department of Education recognize you for your work. As President Biden has said, democracy doesn't happen by accident. We have to defend, strengthen, and renew it to ensure free and fair elections. Too many Americans face significant obstacles to exercising their sacred fundamental right to vote. In March, President Biden signed an executive order to leverage the resources of the federal government to increase voter registration services and information about voting. This is part of an all-of-government approach to ensure all eligible Americans can participate in our democracy. The Department of Education is preparing a toolkit of resources and strategies for increasing civic engagement at elementary schools, secondary schools, 
and colleges and universities. This will help more than 67 million students and their families. We're also encouraging institutions to identify further opportunities to assist eligible students with voter registration. You all do an amazing job to ensure students have the ability to exercise their right to vote. Once again, congratulations to all the winners of the Civic Nation All-In Campus Democracy Challenge. It's been my pleasure to share some words with you today. Thank you for all you do for America's students and for our nation. Thank you, Secretary Cardona, to your commit, for your commitment to supporting informed and active participation in our democracy. We're grateful that it's as important to you as it is to Allen and the campuses that we serve. Next up, Allen is excited to present our Best in Class Awards, naming winners of categories among similar institution types. First, its inaugural awards honoring historically Black colleges and universities, or HBCUs. I have the pleasure of welcoming back to the stage my colleague Dominique to present our inaugural Best in Class Awards for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. Over to you, Dominique. Thank you again, Jen. It's an honor to present Allen's first ever Historically Black College and University Awards today. Allen currently has 33 participating HBCUs, which are leading the way in student voting and Allen's HBCU community of practice. Today, we will honor three of them for their achievements in student voter registration and student voting. The highest voter registration rate among all participating HBCUs goes to North Carolina A&T State University with a registration rate of 92%. Congratulations, North Carolina A&T State University on this outstanding voter registration rate. The next award is for the most improved voting rate of all participating HBCUs. This award goes to Clark Atlanta University. Congratulations, Clark Atlanta University on your 24 percentage point voting rate increase. The final HBCU Best in Class Award is for the highest voting rate of all participating HBCUs. This award goes to Spelman College in Georgia with a remarkable voting rate of 79.4%. Congratulations, Spelman College, on this incredible achievement and on your gold seal. Congratulations to all in's first ever HBCU Best in Class awardees. I look forward to continuing all in support of HBCUs in 2022 for the midterm elections and those elections that will follow. I am ambitiously optimistic that all HBCUs will become all in for student voter participation by joining all in in the future. I'll now turn things over to Don Shea, political director for student perks to present all in's community college best in class awards. Thanks so much, Dominique. Like all in, the student perks support community colleges across the country with their nonpartisan democratic engagement efforts. Community colleges enroll more than 8.2 million students across the U.S., and many of them are doing incredible work to support student voting. 185 community colleges are currently participating in all in. And now I'm proud to announce the Community College Best in Class Awards. The highest voter registration rate award among all participating community colleges goes to Davidson Davie Community College, North Carolina, with a rate of 87.3%. Congratulations to Davidson Davie College Community College for your efforts to support student voter registration. Next, the most improved voter rate, voting rate for all participating community colleges award goes to Northeast Mississippi Community College. Congratulations, Northeast Mississippi Community College on your outstanding voting rate increase of 22.5 percentage points. For the last community college best in class award, the highest voting rate of all participating community colleges award goes to Inver Hills Community College in Minnesota with a rate of 71.8 percent. Congratulations, Inver Hills Community College on your outstanding voter turnout rate and achieving a gold seal. Congratulations to Davidson Davey Community College, Northeast Mississippi Community College, and Inver Hills Community College on earning these Community College Best in Class Awards. 
Next, you'll hear from Eddie Zerbe, Special Projects Director from the Students Learn, Students Vote Coalition, who will present the best in class awards for all four year institutions. Thanks, Don. The Students Learn, Students Vote Coalition is made up of all in and hundreds of other local, state, and national and student nonpartisan organizations. Together, we are dedicated to increasing voter participation and civic engagement through data-driven approaches and by working with college administrators and faculty members, which is why it's my honor to present the best-in-class winners for four-year institutions today. All-In's 2021 private four-year best-in-class awardees are. The highest voter registration rate goes to Denison University in Ohio with an incredible voter registration rate of 99.6%. The most improved voting rate goes to College of the Holy Cross in Massachusetts with a 35.9 percentage point increase over 2016. And finally, the highest voting rate uh, best in class award for private four year institutions goes to St. Olaf College in Minnesota with a voting rate of 87.6%. Congratulations to Denison University, College of the Holy Cross, and St. Olaf College on your best in class awards among private four year institutions. And among public four year institutions, the best in class awardees are the highest voter registration rate goes to Georgia College and State University with an incredible voter registration rate of 94.7%. The most improved voting rate goes to University of California, Davis, with a 32.7% percentage point increase over 2016. And finally, the highest voting rate best in class award for public four year institutions goes to the College of New Jersey with a voting rate of 83.1%. Please join me in congratulating all of our four year best in class campuses by giving them a shout out in the chat and on social media. Next, we'll move on to the campus champion awards. These are the highest achieving and most improved campuses across all institutions participating in the all in challenge that submitted their 2020 voting data. First, you'll hear from All In's Associate Director, Ryan Drysdale, who will present the Best Action Plan Awards. Thank you, Eddie. And hello again, everyone. I'm excited to share with you all the Best Action Plan awardees. But first, let me share a bit about action planning at large. Developing a nonpartisan democratic engagement action plan is a key component of both participating in the All In Campus Democracy Challenge and institutionalizing this work on campuses. In 2020, 527 campuses submitted an action plan to All In. The All In team trained more than 75 individuals to use the Strengthening American Democracy rubric to score campus action plans based on nine categories for a total of 36 points. These confidential scores and action plan feedback from the review process were shared with campuses that submitted an action plan. Action planning is a critical part of the process of how colleges and universities can set strategy, goals, and institutionalize nonpartisan democratic engagement in student voting. It's a roadmap for what a campus wants to achieve, how they're going to get there. And I'm honored to present the Best Action Plan Champion Award to three campuses who all tied for the highest score of 36 out of a possible 36 points. The winners are... SUNY Stony Brook University in New York, Towson University in Maryland, and the University of Illinois at Chicago, which is winning this award for the second election in a row. Congratulations to these three winners on their impressive 2020 action plans. They are posted on our website in case you want to take a look. And I'll also use this moment as a reminder that we look forward to reviewing drafts of everyone's 2022 action plans next month following our December 15th submission opportunity. Campuses can email their action plan drafts to actionplans at civicnation.org to receive feedback from our review team. The next set of awards are presented to campuses based on their national study of learning, voting, and engagement, voting data from the Institute for Democracy and Higher Education at the Jonathan M. Tisch College of Civic Life at Tufts University. The first set of awards will be the most improved category, presented by my colleague, Bree Moore, All In's Communication Coordinator. Thank you, Ryan. One of the most impressive things about getting campus voting data every two years is being able to see change over time. 
which is why I'm pleased to present the Most Improved Campus Awards. For the Most Improved Undergraduate Voting Rate Award goes to Loyola University of Maryland with an incredible 39 percentage point in voting rate increase between the 2016 and 2020 eventual elections. Congratulations to Loyola University, Maryland on your outstanding voting rate increase. Next, the most improved overall voting rate award goes to College of the Holy Cross in Massachusetts with an incredible 35.9 percentage point voting rate increase between the 2016 and 2020 presidential elections. Congratulations, College of, Holy Cro of the Holy Cross, on moving the student voting needle in such a big way on your campus. Please join me in congratulating these two campuses for their incredible efforts in the chat and on social. Next up, our friend and partner, Clarissa Unger, the director of the Students Learn Students Vote Coalition will present the awards for highest voter registration rates. Thank you, Bree. The Students Learn Students Vote Coalition has collaborated with All In and other key partners on the Ask Every Student initiative to help campuses integrate voter registration into campus systems and processes, which is why it's my honor to present the Champion Voter Registration Rate Awards. The campus voter registration rate is the percent of eligible students who registered to vote. The 2020 National Student Voter Registration Rate was 83% up from 76% in 2016. The award for the most improved student voter registration rate goes to Wheaton College in Massachusetts. Wheaton College had an incredible 27.9 percentage point voter registration rate increase between the 2016 and the 2020 presidential elections. Congratulations Wheaton College on this impressive voter registration improvement. Next, our champion award for the highest overall voter registration rate of all participating campuses goes to Denison University in Ohio. Denison University registered an impressive 99.6% of their students for the 2020 election, showing everyone else that near full student voter registration or near full student voter participation is a goal worth setting because it's possible. Congratulations, Denison University, on this incredible achievement in voter registration. Last but not least, I will turn it over to Rahila Ahmed, Deputy Director of the Fair Election Center's Campus Vote Project, to present the final awards this afternoon, those for the highest voting rate. Thank you, Clarissa. These final awards are for overall highest student voting rates. These campuses excelled at moving the needle to help more of their students not only register, but also overcome barriers to cast a vote on or before election day, all while fostering a culture of engagement across their campuses. The highest undergraduate student voting rate award is actually a three-way tie, which includes campuses spanning from one coast to the other. The three winners for highest undergraduate voting rate are Bowdoin College in Maine, College of the Atlantic in Maine, and the University of Puget Sound in Washington State. All three institutions had an impressive 85% undergraduate student voting rate. Congratulations on this incredible accomplishment in undergraduate student voter participation. And now, the final award of this ceremony, the champion award for highest overall student voting rate of all institutions participating in the All In Challenge that submitted a 2020 NSOLVE report. Please join me in congratulating St. Olaf College in Minnesota. St. Olaf College had the highest overall student voting rate at 87.6%. To put this achievement in perspective, their student voting rate is 21 percentage points higher than the national student voting average for the 2020 election. St. Olaf, we're looking forward to learning from you and giving you a platform to share your best practices with the hundreds of other institutions in the program so that they can achieve what you have in the way of student voter participation. 
Congratulations again to each of the All In Awards winners this year. Like them, we're all in to vote. I'll hand the spotlight back over to Jen to close us out. Thank you, Rahila, and thank you and congratulations to everyone recognized here today. Since we can't all be together in one room to make some noise to cheer for the individuals and campuses we recognize today, I wanted to provide one opportunity to really celebrate all of the individuals and campuses for their incredible work. So bear with me for just a moment as we share a virtual round of applause. Thank you each for being all in to vote and for your commitment to helping college students form the habit of voting. As we've mentioned, closing voting gaps, gaps that persist based on age and race is core to Allen's work. We were excited today to give out our first HBCU awards, but we're, we were also hoping to recognize campuses doing the best work to close gaps in voter registration and turnout that persists by race in their own campuses. We chose not to, however, because only about half of campuses even report the necessary enrollment data by race to the National Student Clearinghouse, which is what Nancy Thomas and her colleagues at the Institute for Democracy and Higher Education used to produce the campus UNSOL reports. This is where each of you come in. Please check to ensure that your institution is reporting accurate student voter enrollment by race to the National Student Clearinghouse. Our collective work to ensure parity in college student voting, regardless of race, is dependent upon it, as well as to ensuring access to the polls. We hope that by the ceremony in 2023, we'll be able to recognize campuses doing the work to achieve racial equity in college student voting. And another challenge that we need to address intentionally together is the underrepresentation of community colleges in this work. Proportionally fewer community colleges are participating in unsolved and in the All on Campus Democracy Challenge than their university peers. There are more than 750 community colleges serving more than 4 million students that are not yet participating in All In. Our team in the student voting space more broadly need to collectively serve community college students better. We hope that you'll work with us to suggest community colleges that you and your campuses know and work with and encourage them to sign up to participate in both NSOL and join the All In network. Now I wanna take time to recognize individuals and organizations that helped make today possible. A special thank you to our generous ceremony sponsors, the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation, David and Andrea Myers, Pay Our Interns, and Princeton University's Vote 100. Thank you to our friends and partners at the Students Learn Students Vote Coalition for your support of the ceremony and your partnership year in and year out in relation to our team and this work. Thank you also to the individual supporters who donated to make today possible. And I must also extend sincere gratitude to partners that funded our efforts to support campuses and students through the 2020 election and beyond, including the Jeffrey H. and Sherry L. Aronson Family Foundation, the Campus Democracy Fund, Jean and Louise Hanover, Eugenie and Brian Rosenthal, the Kresge Foundation, the Littman Camper Family Foundation, the Lisa and Douglas Goldman Fund and the Progressive Fund. And finally, our special gratitude to Ian Simmons and the Foundation for Civic Leadership who continue to provide vision and ongoing support for this program. I must also thank my coworkers at Civic Nation for your support, expertise and friendship from data to communications, government relations to organizing and everything in between. We've helped to move our work forward and to ensure that we're able to support campuses and college students in their democratic engagement efforts. And a special heartfelt thank you to my amazing team members, to Bree, Kat, Dominique, Stephanie, and Ryan. You're the best colleagues to have. Your commitment to our work, our team, and our democracy are on parallels. And we couldn't have made it this far without our amazing cohort of interns over the past two years, Carolina, Kristen, Macy, Manny, Marissa, Peyton, Philomena, Stone, and Zipporah. You've all helped make this work possible. And a final thank you to all of you participating in the All In Challenge and who joined us today to celebrate the work of these incredible campuses. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern for All In's first ever state voting challenge ceremony, recognizing 17 state and city campus voting challenges. This event will include keynote remarks from Pennsylvania Secretary of Commonwealth 
Veronica de Graffenreid and Washington State Secretary of State Kim Wyman, as well as breakout ceremonies by each of those state voting challenges. And we hope you'll join us again on Wednesday at the same time for All In's first ever athletic conference challenge ceremony, recognizing campuses and individuals across 12 athletic conferences. You won't want to miss hearing from Craig Robinson, the executive director of the National Association of Basketball Coaches, who we awarded a partner award to today. There will also be an opportunity to break out into groups by athletic conference for conference specific awards. Immediately following the ceremony today, please join us along with the Students Learn Students Vote Coalition for the post-election gathering campus action planning training, where members of our team will discuss best practices and resources for developing your campus's 22 action plan. Note that we already have two in, um, kudos to Simpson College and the University of Connecticut, and also the votes and ballots activity. You'll find a link to join that session in the chat now. But before we head off to that session, I want to once again congratulate all of our awardees and thank you each for joining us today. Here's to continuing this work as we look towards the 2022 midterm elections and beyond and to achieving full student voter participation in each and every election. Together, we can strengthen our democracy. Have a good day and as always, thank you for being all in for our democracy.